Hi everyone, Deborah Lynn here in the studio. I hope you're doing well. I have my art journal out. Um, this is a Strathmore uh, mixed media journal and I'm just gonna flip the page here and let's get busy and do something fun here. I'm gonna work real intuitively. There's gonna be two uh, paintings that are gonna happen here today. We're gonna do one that ends up turning into orchids and then the next one is gonna be wild daisies. Um, and I'm going to be inspired by some, by some daisies that I was around three years ago that have stuck with me. And I want to paint them again. So that will come into the paint. But this very first painting that's happening, I have no idea where I'm going with it. As you can see, I've just splashed in some dirty uh, pigmented water. And that's just simply uh, watercolor that's in that water. And it's dirty. And it helps me see what's really going on in the paper and when it's just clean water it's hard to see so utilizing that dirty water is perfect so i'm just dropping in some pigment some of it's landing in the puddles some of it's landing on dry so i have a little bit of both but i'm now going to go in with a wet quill and this quill is holding a lot of water and I'm cleaning it off there at times. If it gets too full of pigment, I will go in the water and clean it off. But I'm moving this around and I just want to get some pigment on the paper spread out a little bit. So now um, I got to look at this and I'm seeing a lot of puddles. And because this is mixed media paper, it's not going to absorb that water. Um, that's why when we work with loose uh, when we want to work loose, we need to work with paper that's um, easy to work with. And cold press, I think, is the best. Um, when you get into hot press, the stuff dries way too fast. And if you get into mixed media paper like this, uh, the stuff just sits on the surface and you just have to run after the puddles constantly, which can be very difficult for somebody that's new to watercolor and you want to learn how to paint loose then by all means 100 percent cotton paper cold press and i love the fabriano artistico the best um i have used arches uh it's okay it ripples on me um i like saunders waterford um, and a cheap one that you can use as the Hanamula. That one seems to work well. And if you want to work on a small piece of paper, the B paper, I think they have like a six by nine or something like that. That's relatively cheap. Uh, so there's papers out there that are affordable, that are cotton. If you're new, um, this won't hinder you when you're painting. If you use the cotton, you're going to learn properly from the get-go, okay? Instead of stumbling around and working with difficult paper, um, that has so many things that go wrong. You don't want to do that to yourself. Use a good paper or get a journal. Get one that's watercolor paper. I just happen to be working in one today that's mixed media. Because I'm seasoned and I've, I've been painting for many years now, I can pretty much paint on anything in front of me. So, because I know how to handle all the water and the pigment and all that stuff, okay? So you learn that as you go, okay? But don't hinder yourself by having inferior paper. Very important to use good paper, okay? So as you can see, I, I was seeing orchids, okay? And then I put the stem in so you can see what I was looking at. The same thing is happening on the other side. I'm looking at that and I'm saying, what am I seeing? Well, I could turn that other side also into orchid, so I'm gonna do that also. The only thing that is not great is the composition. It's like they're coming together and meeting together. They're making almost up a half of a heart shape, which is a little bit weird, but that doesn't matter. I'm playing in my journal, and if I wanna utilize these, it's easy. I just take a picture of each page and then I can put it in an editing program, remove the background, layer them, and have fun with them. I can put them on a phone case. I can put them on a tote bag. I can put them on a coffee mug. I can do all kinds of things. And I could change the background to, let, let's say, a light blue color that is in the editing program. So there's a lot you can do. You don't always have to have your stuff done on watercolor paper. You can use mixed media paper. You can 
use you can use all kinds of things you just know that you have you might have a little struggle if you're new how to handle all that water i showed you a tip of how you go about doing that with the one ply paper um, that will pick up all those puddles without creating a texture from the quilting from let's say from a paper towel um that's a nightmare uh, and sometimes you can use it to your benefit and make cool effects in your painting, okay? So don't get me wrong, sometimes it's a good thing. But there's other times, like in today's painting, that would not have been a good thing. So that's why I use that one-ply paper. So as you can see, this is it, now I'm going to go in and I'm going to add just more detail. Because right now I have the foundation of the flowers and what I, what I want here. And I'm going to go in and I'm going to add some yellow. Okay, because if you look at uh, a pretty um, pink uh, uh, orchid, a lot of times they'll have some yellow in there. And so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw just a little bit of yellow in. And I've had so many, uh, I don't have to pull up an image of orchids to kind of get uh, the general idea of what's there. I'm not putting in a lot of detail. Um, this is just very um, loose play on um, orchids. So I just dropped just a little bit of information in there with the yellow. Now I'm going in and I'm adding even more depth, okay? Um, I'm increasing the values as I go. I started with really thin, dirty water, right? Then I went in with one, then I went in with some pigment and I spread it out. That's my second layer. Then I went in and built up more value and added more depth. And now I'm going in and I'm adding detail, which is adding even more depth. So you have to get all those values in there. You need to build that up. And I'm also kind of haphazardly putting all these little spots on. If you look at some orchids, some of them have like pretty spots all over them. And that's what's happening here. I'm pulling from my memory bank of putting these little spots in, but I'm also doing it very free flow. Sometimes they're not even on the petal, okay? They're kind of falling, they're kind of falling off the petal, like they're flying off the petals. So it gives the painting some movement and action uh, and there's, um, my personality is I'm just allowing myself to just put the paint where I want. Does it need to make sense? Not always. Um, I'm not being analytical and overthinking things and, and thinking things through. I'm working quickly because things are going to dry on me. See, as you can see, some of these little spots are not always on a pedal. And I'll show you that in a minute where they kind of, Right now, they're just, that one was off the pedal. And there's another one that kind of came off the pedal. Let's see if another one happens. I know it does on the other left one. We're getting there. And that kind of not on the pedal and here is definitely not on the pedal so it's kind of coming off the pedal okay um it just I just think it just gives it more personality just I don't know more energy so uh, that is the orchid I hope you guys oh wait I have to put the green leaves in I'll do that here in a minute I was getting ahead of myself getting ready for the daisies here but that's coming up calm down Deb um, still going tap, 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 getting those little spots in. But doesn't that give the painting energy to see those little spots? Before that, it was pretty, but to put those spots on there, just, ah, it just took it to the next level. And here's the thing, when you're working in your journal, that's when you can experiment with this stuff. Do I push it to the next level? Do I keep going, you know? And here I'm building that up. I'm not quite sure what was happening there, but you know, you just, I just embrace it, whatever. It is what it is. It didn't need to really happen up there, but it did. Almost looks like a poppy up there at the top. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with, the, um, make the leaves. It's easy. 
You see how easy this is? I am, I made a kind of a weird mark there on the other one that I just did. And, and that one didn't turn out so great, but I'm not going to go in and mess around with it because then it could, I could mess it up even more. So I'm just going to embrace what it is and it is what it is. And it is beautiful in its own right. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the next page and this one, a dirty water is going down, but now, as you can see, I have, my mind is thinking about the petals of a sunflower or a daisy. Okay. You have to let me know, are these wild daisies? Here, let me pop a picture in of what I'm talking about. And that's so, that's what I'm talking about. I was in the Midwest and they were everywhere. They were along the highways. They were along the country roads. They were everywhere. And I was so enamored by them that I just, I always want to paint them now that I've had, I was around all that. And it was just, they were just so beautiful. Um, so, and then the other side of the paper is a little bit crazy. <laughs> and what happens, it's hard to know. Um, but I am gonna have, I'm gonna have to make it into something. So as you can see, I'm just going in with just a little bit of green, but it's a little bit haphazard how I'm putting it down. It's not like I'm making long stems or making leaves. I'm just kind of putting some textury looking green down and I'll make sense of it as I go along, okay? And right now I'm just making a very rough um, sketch of some petals, not getting too uh, contrived with it, keeping it very loose. Now this gets a little cray cray over here on this side. Um, I'm just working very whatever feels right to me. And, and now I'm going to go in and I'm going to uh, bump those edges and loosen all that pigment up. And it still looks a little crazy. It's like, okay, well, how are you going to turn that into anything? Well, you just stick around and see how I do this. And I'm just going to put a little bit of that yellow there and something there. So it looks like there's some flowers in the background. I'm going to pop in a quick video of those beautiful flowers. And I'm putting some brown down for the center. So now I'm going to start putting wherever I think I see a flower. I'm going to kind of put a center down and then just start building from that. And I'm not using black. A lot of times we make the mistake of putting black down and thinking that that's what our sunflower needs to be. Let me just drop a picture of one up close right now. So you can see there really wasn't any black. It's a lot of blues and they can be kind of purple and browns. So there's a lot of different colors that are in the center of these flowers. So don't get fooled by thinking they need to be black. Uh, from far away, we might see black, but it's far from it. And sometimes just having solid brown isn't also the answer. Sometimes throwing a, that little extra blue or purple in there can really, really set it off. But I'm not going to get too far into all that with mine today. I'm going to keep everything real simple because, of course, I'm just working in my journal here. And these are just some quick paintings. Um, just to show you how I go about playing around in my journals and experimenting and um, trying to figure new things out. And again, I'm just going in and anywhere that there's some puddles, I want to control all that. And yes, you do pick up some pigment, but as we paint, we paint in layers. So we don't have to worry about that because we can rebuild areas. It's all about really controlling that it's all about controlling that water and creating values. So you want some light, you wanna go from light, medium to dark in values. So it's always important. If you're painting in just light values, your painting's gonna look flat. Um, even if it's two, two levels of, um, of two layers, it might not be enough, just keep going. And then that, flower is a little bit more droopy so he's uh he's kind of droopy isn't he but some of those sunflowers are 
And as you see, I don't always connect my stems fully. I kind of let them right, right there. That's all that was needed, just a little bit, because the viewer can put it all together. And I'll put more grasses in there in a minute, um, and the viewer attaches all that, with their brain attaches it all. So you don't have to do all that. It keeps it really loose, and that's what we want to do here. We want to learn how to paint loose, uh, then we have to think a little bit looser um, when it comes to how do we attach the petals, how do we paint the stems and all that. Just paint loose. Paint in from your instinct, what feels right. Um, it's a lot of times we come, now here's where I get a bit more, you can see I'm slowing down. And I'm trying to make those petals more sunflower-like. So it's slowing me down. So there's a lot more thinking going on um, and processing and trying to get them down, but still working relatively quick. I'm not taking my sweet time because then things dry out. I want the paper to kind of be consistent, have some areas wet, some dry. Um, so as I work around the painting, I'm not just working on one corner. I'm constantly moving around. Okay, as you see, I don't get laser focused on one flower. I work a little bit on it and then I move on. So you gotta keep moving. So that way you have areas that are the same wetness throughout the whole painting, okay? And there's certain areas, you know, so that's all important. Okay, so now I'm just making my little droopy flower there and just putting some stems in and just a little bit of grass maybe in the background there. There's some grass there. Not too much, just a little bit of information. And now I'm just gonna go in and just create some leaves. Do they look just like the leaves that are on these wild flowers? No, it doesn't, doesn't matter. It's in my journal, I'm just playing. Whatever feels right to me is what's coming out of me and that's what it's gonna be. Um, and it still, it still comes across as little sunflowers of some sort. And now I'm gonna go in to some of my browns. And I went into different two different wells and grabbed some color. I don't wanna get, we don't wanna use black, okay? Because the centers of these flowers are not black. Okay, but I am going pretty dark with the browns. Um, I'm not gonna add in an extra color. I don't end up doing that. I'm just using like two different, two, three different browns. So there's just slight variation in color in certain areas. And I'm not making round circles. I'm just kind of kind of slop kind of a sloppy little kind of center that it's not perfect. Um, so it has a bit more texture to it. If that makes sense. And now I'm just putting just a little bit of that brown into play um, because it's in the center. So I want to put it in the stems, kind of helps harmonize things a little bit, um, ties it all together a bit. And 
And now I'm just going to get um, a colored, not colored pencil, a watercolor pencil. And I'm going to draw, I, I just felt like it needed something else to make it even looser. Uh, and also give it like another layer of interest. So I'm always trying to figure out how I can keep pushing it. And so now I'm going, I'm holding that pencil at the very end. So I'm working really loose. It's almost scribbly, okay? Uh, and it's kind of hard to control that um, pencil when your hand's pulled back that far. And then really hard for me because I have tremors on top of it. So, um, but just keeping it real loose. And again, it gives it something really interesting when you're up close to see it up close. It's like, oh, there's all kinds of scribble marks on here. And they don't always have to, you don't have to like uh, scribble, you don't have to like make each petal perfect. Just have fun, just make it really loose. If your painting's loose, your, your marks need to be loose also. Otherwise it's starting to look like it's conflicting. And now I'm just gonna do some asemic writing. You might ask, what is that? That's just writing that doesn't say anything. It's just more like scribble writing. And that's it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed these two uh, presentations. In the meantime, stay safe out there. Stay well. God bless. Bye -bye.